Hey, I'm Isabel Burka, and when I was 12 years old, I founded a multi-million dollar bath and body products company called The Bomb Bath. After five years of building my own brand, I've discovered a passion for helping young and innovative entrepreneurs tell their stories. Hopefully, you'll be inspired by the guests here on build biz and maybe even motivated to start a business of your own. Let's get into it. This is build biz with Isabel Burka. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Isabel Burka, and I'm your host here on build biz And today I have joining me Brennan Agronoff, the founder and CEO of Hoop Swag. Yeah, thanks for having me on. No problem. Yeah, thanks for so thanks so much for joining me. So um, you started Hoop Swag. Why don't you just explain to the audience what Hoop Swag is and why you decided to start it? Yeah, so Hoop Swag is now like a, uh, I think of us more of like a manufacturing company, but in a short story, we basically import white socks and other products from overseas. And then we do all the sort of customizing with like fun designs um, out of our, we've manufacture everything out of Portland, Oregon. So we basically are like a D to C online e-commerce brand that sells all sorts of like fun, cool socks and all that. Um, and if you've ever seen socks, like people's dogs or faces on them, we do a bunch of those too now. Um, so it's been uh super cool, but yeah. So I started Hoopswag when I was in, when I was 13. So back in 2013 and it all sort of stemmed from like, I was obsessed with these Nike elite socks, which I grew up in Portland, Oregon. And so everyone's parents went basically like worked at Nike. And so all the kids in middle school would show up with these like new Nike products. And they started showing up with these fancy expensive socks that were like 12 or $14, which like I thought was ridiculous, but everyone else was wearing them. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go buy some myself. Um, but they only had like four basic colors at the time, which was like, I think it was like black, blue, white, and red or something like that. Um, so I was like, all right, these are cool. And everyone's wearing them. Like, obviously these are very popular, but my, like, the first thought was I was, like, a very extra kid, I would say, in terms of, like, I was always a kid that would wear neon in middle school. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to need to find, like, a rainbow version of these. And so I found this, like, it was, like, this neon rainbow pair of socks, uh, of these Nike Elite socks, specifically, on Instagram one day. And it was, like, 40 to $50. And I was like, that's ridiculous, but I, like, really want these. So saved up my money all one summer, like, mowing the lawn. Bought a pair of these $50 socks, um, which like my parents at the time thought was absolutely just absurd and ridiculous, but I bought them. I love them. And then all my friends were like, where can I get these? Like I was playing basketball at the time and all, all these basketball kids wanted them. And I was like, okay, um, there's clearly like something here. And like, honestly, at the core, like I wanted more myself um, and didn't want to pay $50 each. And like, I had been selling stuff on eBay for like four or five years, just kind of like messing around at this point. Um, like I literally started selling stuff when I was eight. So I was a bit of an odd kid. Uh, but I essentially was like, all right, how can I make these myself? So I started doing a bunch of research, which literally was like going on websites, any forms I could talk to anyone on Yahoo answers, like, um, any YouTube videos. I was talking to like screen printing shops, basically like whoever had information on this, um, cause there wasn't that much out there at the time. Like it wasn't, you couldn't just search and figure it out. So I did all this research and then I, I finally found out like the process or the science used to do it is a process called sublimation. And so then I was like, okay, how do you even do that? Um, and so then I actually ended up finding a local guy who was able to do samples, which was actually really difficult. There's not that many people that advertise or anyone knows that actually does this process. And so I got a local guy to do some samples, sold them on eBay, essentially like proved concept, if you will. And then I was like, all right. I, this clearly works. I sold them. I made money on like these pairs that were not even well printed at all. Like they were very like, does this work or not? Um, and so then I put together like a, a, a business plan, I guess, which is really at the time was just a giant Excel spreadsheet, um, which like, it was just like, okay, here's how many socks I have to sell. Here's what it's going to cost. Here's how long it's going to take those sorts of things. Um, and then I basically got my parents to give me a $3,000 loan based off of that. Um, and literally started printing these things in my garage in August of 2013. So what kind of equipment did you use the loan, the $3,000 loan to get that equipment that you needed that you had learned about from your original um, sublimation <laughs> experimentation? Hey, that rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. So that $3,000, basically all of that went to that initial, like literally the lowest of low end sublimation equipment you could purchase, but like the minimum 
to make it work for what I needed it to. That's crazy. And then you worked that equipment yourself. Yeah, like I just set it up in my garage. And also, like, I didn't really know how to use it at the time. Like, I, that was just more YouTube videos from the company and trying to figure it out. And there's been so many pieces along the way, like new equipment and all this. But I was literally like in my garage making socks every day. <laughs> That's funny. That kind of reminds me of my story just a little bit. Um, there, I, I always see these like parallels between uh, my business story and other young entrepreneurs and just any entrepreneurs in general, their business stories. Um, my mom gave us an $150 loan because bath bombs, you don't really need that big of an investment, I guess, to start out. We didn't need a bath bomb machine or anything. Um, all the labor was free. So that means my sister and I were making all of the products. Um, and we would literally just come home from school and go straight to our basement and just make bath bombs all day until our fingerprints got calluses on them. And even then we kept making bath bombs so I, I feel like I draw these parallels another parallel that I actually uh, drew between you and myself and our stories is um, you wanted the product yourself and I think that's something that comes up a lot on this show or has come up in the past um, people always they started with a problem that they themselves were experiencing and they decided to try and solve that problem at problem and it turns out other people had that problem too. And uh, what we always kind of discover when I'm talking to our guests is that um, it, if you're trying to think of a solution to a problem that you don't have, you're probably not going to be able to come up with a solution as effective as somebody who may be trying to solve the problem who actually has that problem, if that makes sense. Um, so I feel like that's, that's an interesting parallel that I draw between our stories. <laughs> yeah. And one other thing I'll say is like, when I started it, I did not like set out to, to start a company by any means. I literally, like you said, I started out because I wanted more of it. And it was just kind of a bit of a random thing that I had this background that I'd already sold stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, I can sell these. And actually, like I, my first thought when all of this was happening was like, if I sell a pair of socks, that means I make enough to be able to keep two. Like that was the thought process. It wasn't like, oh, I make $20. It was like, I, how many, I was, my, my profit was determined in how many socks I got to keep. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So what did you do for fun when you were younger? Like, I'm trying to trace your your ingenuity. You describe it as you being an odd kid, but I'm going to go with more like an ingenuitive kid. Um, like, did you like Legos? Like, what did you like when you were younger? Okay, so this is going to sound really weird. Um, so both my parents, like, came from, like, I'd say, say relatively, like, entrepreneurial backgrounds. Like, one of my dad ran, like, an agency. My mom was, like, in IT. But the way their brain functions, I would say, is very entrepreneurial. Um I ended up spending a lot of time. I spent a lot of time playing soccer as a kid. Um, so like I, I found out that like, I love that, but also I was like literally in love with Excel and PowerPoint. Like I would make PowerPoints for fun. I would make Excel things for fun. Like I thought that was the most interesting thing ever. Um, but I definitely did also go through a Lego phase. Um, and the, when I was really young, the toy trains, I was obsessed with, um, like building the little giant, like really complex things out of them. Um, so I don't know. It, I was a bit, uh, again, we're not going to call it odd, but um, yeah, I think I, I spent a lot of my childhood playing soccer though. That's cool. I actually played soccer myself. I won the um, the house. I, I don't know what it's called in Oregon, but it's basically like the, um, the like club. Like you can just sign up. There's no tryouts. I won the house soccer championship. So I'm feeling really cool about that. I don't know if like that impresses you at all, but. <laughs> oh, I'm very impressed. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Um yeah, I got a participation trophy. <laughs> um, so you were super curious when you're younger and you, you kind of point your entrepreneurial um, tendencies to uh, your parents. D would you say that um, entrepreneurialism is something that can be taught or is it something that you think um, you just have to be born with? I think it's a combo honestly because like so the way I think about it is like I was born however I was born right and yeah I have my parents or my parents but like also my parents were like my closest like I don't really have mentors I guess but like they're probably the closest I would have to that if I had to name people um just because like growing up there was very like they would explain even like basic financial concepts like whether or not these applied to business they all kind of created this storm of things that came together to create it but like I think part of it is taught i guess I, I don't know if it's even taught or if it's learned necessarily but i think like at the core of it like you just have to be a bit like ambitious to solve something um because 
like I, so I've also got a brother who's two years younger, who's really interesting to me. He's not entrepreneurial, but he's very like in the sense of business, but I would consider him very like entrepreneur, entrepreneurial minded in the terms of like being driven. And like, he is extremely into like space stuff and like pushing the limits of what he does at his age there. It's not business, but it's the same sort of concepts, I guess. Yeah, it's like you have to find something that you're really passionate about and then you can take like your upbringing and then also just like your passion for a certain subject and then channel that into problem solving, which I think is actually like the root of what entrepreneurship is. It's just like problem solving. So yeah, that's super interesting. Um, I would agree too. I think that I think it's a combination of both, you know, like my, we look back, um, my sister and I on like our early days and we would like sell freelance art to our grandma. We, we said we had a business called art plastic, but we only had one client. So it, now we describe yeah. it as a freelance business. Um, we would sell art to her, you know, and it was just, it was something where like, we were just so young that it's like, well, where did they get this? Um, but I think that as I've grown up, I've also seen that entrepreneurial, tendencies can be taught and I think that these tendencies are always very helpful no matter what you're doing so your brother's into space stuff you said yeah um yeah like he can he can channel these tendencies into solving problems in that realm and I think that entrepreneurship is important no matter what field you're gonna end up working in whether it's for yourself or for someone else totally totally yeah so um just kind of going off the point of like creativity and like channeling yourself into your business, are there any creative decisions that you've made along the way that you would say you maybe would have made different decisions if you weren't the young age that you were at the time of starting your business? Yeah. I actually attribute a lot of what's happened like up until now to my naivety at 13. Um, like for example, so when I started this, like I said, I bought this equipment set up in my garage to this manufacturing stuff. Well, if you had asked someone who might've gone who like is more experienced in business or gone to business school, whatever it is, they would have been like, oh, you find a manufacturer for that. Like I, I didn't find a manufacturer because I didn't know that was a thing. Like I was the manufacturer and longer term, it actually helped out. Like it's played a tremendous role in what I'm doing now. And like, if I had, if I had started today, like if I go ask any of my friends that run like e com sites, they're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go manufacture my own product. They're going to be like, I'm going to find a supplier. Um, but like the combination of like, for me, I owned everything and I knew how to, I taught myself how to do everything versus I didn't know you were supposed to outsource it. You were supposed to hire people. Um, so like I had to teach myself the graphic design, the web stuff, the, the manufacturing, how do you ship things? Like I knew every piece of the process, which like has allowed me to do things a lot more efficiently and, and hire people better now that I actually do hire people. But being involved with every part of the process gives you like a much more encompassing view of the whole thing. But I mean, yeah, anything from that to like a lot of the lessons learned from sourcing things and it's a lot of your first times um, were a lot of my like first with business were with the, the sock company. And so I think being naive in those situations actually helped me out a bunch. Mm -hmm. I would actually completely agree. You know, my sister and I, I think that if we had started our business and we kind of did realize all the risks that we were taking by uh, starting a business, um, it just, just in general, you know, uh, we probably would have been a lot more afraid too. So, and I feel like kids kind of have this, um, this like, like these mannerisms to them, or they're just almost like a little bit reckless, maybe a little bit like uh, risk taking. And something that I've also noticed is that kids, they fail every day because they're constantly trying new things. So they're not afraid of failure, which is why I think that um, kids actually make great entrepreneurs, which is hence why I want to tell young entrepreneurial stories on build a -Biz. <laughs> um, Side note, um, my hands are also completely like my entire family's hands are heat resistant now from calluses from touching hot things. Oh, really? I, I heard you mention the hand thing. I thought it was funny. Like, I can't feel heat in my hands anymore. That's really funny. Um, that's actually a good place, Brendan, for us to take a quick music break. And when we come back, we will finish telling the rest of your entrepreneurial story. All right, everybody, welcome back from the music break. You're listening to Build a Biz with Isabel Burka. That's me. And I'm here today with Brennan Agronoff, the founder of Hoop Swag, which is a company that prints different merchandise for people and does so much more. Brennan, thank you so much for joining me here today. Yeah. So before the music break, you were kind of saying that you were a little bit naive when you started your business. And I thought of an interesting point to bring up, uh, kind of going off of that. You're happy that you kind of made this jump and that you were 
um, in that position where you're kind of forced to learn. And I would say that that's something that I'm happy about too, is like we were producing our products and because of that, we were able to make them unique in a sense that we wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been able to if we didn't produce them ourselves. Because um, I don't know if you know, but all of our bath bombs have a surprise inside of them and no other manufacturer, we thought about it getting them manufactured later down the road, but no other manufacturer had done that yet. And they didn't know how to like automate that process. So it was something where we were actually grateful that, you know, we hadn't gone straight to like the fancy route. And that's probably a piece of advice that I would give to anyone starting a business is even if you don't want to manufacture or like do the service yourself, you just kind of want to control that be in that industry just for like a week, like go, go to the manufacturing plant and really see how everything is made and look at each step of production, because that will allow you to understand how it works better when you're trying to make those uh, decisions when you're higher up. Yeah. And also like product development wise, like it allows you to do things that you wouldn't know is possible. Um, Like very random. I walked through this. um, They're like a, they produce gummy bears. It's like a literal gummy bear lab, but they put like, it's like a, they're like CBD gummy bears. Okay. And it was just so interesting to see how similar the production process of a CBD gummy bear or circle or whatever they are rings um, is to a sock. And like, it's just, I never would have thought about things, but there's things that you could do with that, that like cross over to socks that you'd never know about without actually understanding why, like the way these things actually are created. Yeah, it's great. And it's also fascinating to just like when you look at how each and like how many components go into each, you know, like individual product that's made in this world. Like, I don't know how these people figured all this stuff out, but um, and it's kind of overwhelming to think about at times. But like if you went to a grocery store and you looked at each different item, even if it's just like something natural, like a strawberry, it's like, going from point A to B, I feel like understanding that at such a young age is also very helpful when you're trying to learn about other concepts in the world. So um, I think that's some advice that we would both give to people is really like work in the industry um, at each level that you're going to be in if you want to be uh, successful in your career someday. And um, I also want to ask you, what's some other advice that you would give other young entrepreneurs? Yeah. So one thing before that too, what's what one thing that bugs me a bit now is like, it seems like it's extremely un uh, appealing now for people to go work on a manufacturing floor. Like if you ask like my friends that are, are that I went to high school with that are in college now, and I ask them like if they would ever want to work on a manufacturing floor, they would like look at you like you're crazy. Um, but it's funny because I I just think it's so valuable like understanding why things work the way they do, and like I still work on our manufacturing floor sometimes like when it's needed. Um, but it's just. I don't know. I think, I think being hands-on with that stuff can be tremendously useful. It's not like a sexy job by any means, but like it, it actually is very useful. Um, but in terms of other advice, I think like the biggest thing that's probably helped me to date is like understanding how I learn in the sense that like, I remember I went into like my freshman year of high school and this is like, I wasn't like super school heavy. I definitely like got through school and passed all my classes and everything. But I remember I picked up coding like my freshman year of high school and the coding itself is like useful, sure. But I remember what I learned was like, I was really, re- it was the first time I had gone through like video courses. It was a combination of like video and interactive. And I was like, I went through this really fast and I picked it up really quickly. And I just remember I was like, wow, I will learn really effectively like this. And then anything else that I had to learn, I tried to find similar ways to learn. And it allowed me to pick up skills that I needed like way more effectively and, and faster than I normally would have been able to, which it's funny because I'd have kids in high school, like, how'd you like learn this stuff so fast? I'm like, well, I, I taught myself the way that I think I best learn. Um, and it's paid off tremendously because it's like now, okay, if I need to go pick up how to do something because it just needs to be done in the business and I don't have time to go hire someone, I can go watch 10 YouTube videos on it and know I'm going to be competent enough between that and Googling to figure something out, which really I like, of course, is problem solving. Um, but like being good at Googling and understanding how you learn are like really all you need. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that it's funny because my parents will tell me something along the same lines. Um, don't worry, I'm not saying you're old, but <laughs> you're only one year older than me. But my parents will tell me, they'll say like, listen, you have Google, you have no excuse. Uh, because I mean, I'm sure like I've said this before, like you can't use Google on a test, but like in terms of finding the information, like our parents, what we don't really think about every day is they have to go to the library and use like encyclopedias to find information. And I don't even know how they got by with that because I am, I'm Googling random questions every day on Google. And, um, I think that's, I think that's like 
that's really good advice that anyone can take away from this. And honestly, I'm still trying to find my style of learning. So it's almost like something progressive that, um, that progresses over time. You kind of get to know yourself a little bit better. So I think that's really good advice and it's something that everyone can work on no matter your age. Um, yeah. Speaking of this like idea of like progressing and evolving, how would you say your company has evolved over time? Yeah. So when we started, we were like, I was literally printing on these Nike socks in my garage and like sales wise, it's kind of different, but even just product wise, they go hand in hand. But like the way it's progressed, biggest, the biggest things, I guess, are like, we launched our own brand of sock. We're good at like, I realized that relying on Nike for manufacturing, they're not great supply chain people. Like that's not their thing. That's, I was technically classified as a giant basketball team that was buying thousands of socks. Um, and so like they would just, they could take their stuff away at any point in time and your business is gone. And so we had to like transition to my own brand of sock. And like, that's, we're actually like in the past couple weeks have been phasing Nike stuff out forever um, or like for good. So like that was one huge piece. And then also in the past like two years, um, we've been moving a lot more. We launched like the pet brand, which allows people to upload their dogs and, and print them on there. But that led me into like more of this realm of customization of like, now we're, we built, ended up building all this like software that allows us to do customization almost to a point of like Nike ID, almost where you can add names, numbers, choose your colors, those sorts of things. Um, which I like at a uh, more basic level, I think is sort of where e-commerce and the clothing place is headed is this customization stuff, especially if it's all being shipped to your house anyways. And it doesn't, they don't need to stock inventory of things. And so then you like, like that's that's something I'm excited about, but progressive wise, I mean, we've built so much stuff in the past two years behind the scenes that like no one ever knows exists, but that's what allows this stuff to happen. Um, and I kind of realized or come to the realization that like I'm a manufacturing company that just happens to have some of these like brands on top of it. Like people always know me for like owning this company called Hoopswag or the pet one's called Pet Party, but like I'm just a manufacturing company that like happens to run ads for these brands. Um, and I but. I don't know. It's just interesting because I think over the next couple of years, I will do most of my business through manufacturing deals that no one knows who I am versus like being direct to consumer with brands. Mm, I think that's a really good point. Um, I see kind of the same thing in my business too, where um, you have the branding side of things and you really do have a totally separate production side of things. And, you know, like you have like a manufacturing, I'm sure you have like the facilities and then you also have, um, like people working on the pet party and the hoop swag brands. Um, I'm pretty sure I actually have a pair of your socks with my bunny rabbit's face on it. So um, funny story, actually, my family and I were exchanging like Christmas gifts and uh, my brother, my, my mom is really funny. She got socks with all of our family's face on them. So I don't know if that's in the future for your company, but she also got a separate pair of socks with my bunny's face on it and my brother stole them. So I'm going to have to go to your website later and <laughs> get another pair because my bunny rabbit is very cute. Um, so where can everybody find your products? Yeah. So our stuff's on um, the main site is hoopswag.com. Hoopswag has two G's um, and then petparty.co. That's awesome. So what's next for you? I know you kind of talked about, like you said, further down the line, you want to um, really kind of focus on your manufacturing side of things, uh, kind of providing those products for people. Um, can you give us any insight to who will be buying those products or um, even like what kind of products that you're going to be selling a lot of? Yeah, I mean, I think one big thing area we've been sort of getting closer to targeting to is like gifting, um, like doing a really, really good job with gifting, like almost kind of creepily to a point where it's like, all right, um, and gifting more so for like businesses, right? So you look at some of these like, larger businesses that have these big sort of sales cycles they have to go through. Um, it's like, how can you send a gift, which for us takes the form of like right now it's socks and a handwritten note, but it's whatever product and like a handwritten note, we found handwritten notes do tremendously well. And so it's like, how can we programmatically send product um, that's customized with them? So a really simple example for this is like, we would integrate with a chiropractor, right? Let's say, and they have some sort of, trigger that says, okay, if a customer's come in three times, spent X amount of money, then we're going to send them this. Um, and doing little things like that helps these like local and even these larger enterprise companies keep retention up or use it to sell someone the first time. Um, because when you're selling like a $3,000 product, spending $25 on a pair of socks, 
that's going to keep them around for two more visits is a no-brainer. Um, and so it's almost turns into a bit more of a, a math equation than anything else, but there's a lot that kind of goes on to get there. Um, but that's the sort of stuff I think that we're going to move towards in the next year or two, um, which makes us more of a manufacturing company, but um, that's the stuff that I get excited about. Yeah, and seriously, that's what matters most is that you love what you're doing. So, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Brennan. I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to talk to you. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have left, but thank you so much for coming on build a biz today. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so if you missed the beginning of this episode or you just want to listen to some other episodes, definitely go to the Build-A-Bear YouTube channel where you will find a Build-A-Bear radio playlist with all of the episodes on build a -Biz. And definitely follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is isabel.burkaw where I will be posting weekly updates about when I will be on air next. Thanks, until next time. Bye.